Hallelujah. Amen. Please, just before you sit down, all protocol observed, COVID protocols observed, just share fellowship with someone this morning and greet somebody with the fellowship of Jesus Christ. Amen. Can you do that quickly? Uh, you can give an elbow greeting and pay some beautiful compliments. I like, um, I almost said I like your lip gloss, but that's, that's good, right? <laughs> just pay some uh, compliments. I like your cologne. I like the way you look. But please make sure you mean that from your heart. Amen. Amen. So we're going to sing just two times. I don't know why he's tempting me this morning. Just solemnly. We'll sing this song he's playing. Is that fine? You help me. Let's go. Do, 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 do. Worship him online and on ground. Give him worship. Do, 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 do. Give him the glory that is due his name. Do, 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 do. He is here in your midst. We are here to sing your praise. Can we do it two more times? Lift your voices, everybody, under the sound of my voice. Come on. Do, worship you da, 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 da. we worship you da, 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 da. we are here we are here yes, yes. to seek your one last day. time let everybody sing join the saints triumphant and worship him Thank you for accepting our worship this morning in jesus name we have worship hallelujah glory to god please help me um to give all honor to whom honor is due as we help me celebrate our mothers in the house thank you is that how you honor people thank you ma mommy i didn't do we celebrate you mommy shalami we celebrate you do it more come on I thought some people would go there to give them some feminine hug, amen? Just the ladies, amen? Want you should begin. All the ladies in the house, go and tap grace, amen? Hallelujah. This is wisdom I'm teaching you now. It's wisdom. You don't see grace passing by and you live it. Mm, so you will live to see your own children's children like they have done. Amen. God bless you. We appreciate you, moms. Thank you for being with us. It's no small joy to have you here with us. Amen. Matthew chapter number 19. Please keep standing as our custom means just to read the opening text. We do it to honor the second person of the Trinity. He is the word of God and he is in person, Jesus the Christ. Matthew, eight, Matthew 19. It's quite a long read, but let's begin from 1 through 9. Matthew 19, 1 through 9. Matthew 19, 1 through 9. We read from the King James. If you have any other translations, please feel free. Matthew 19, 1 through 9. Uh, you don't have a Bible? Uh, we'll excuse that. But please, next time when you come to church, come with a Bible. But if you don't, please, um, this is also for you. Matthew 19, 1 through 9. So you know how we do it. I read 1, you read 2, I read 3, you read 4, call and response. And then we'll read the ninth verse together. Here begins the reading of God's holy word. And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these sayings, he departed from Galilee and came into the coast of Judea beyond Jordan. And great multitudes followed him. And the Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him, saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? Next verse read. And said, For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, 
and shall cleave to his wife, and they twin shall become one flesh. Next verse, please read. They said unto him, Why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and to put her away? Next verse, please read. Let's read together two, three, go. And I say unto you, Whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committed adultery, I like this one, and whosoever marrieth her, which is put away, doth commit adultery. You know, when I read texts like this, I say, can you say amen? I wanted to tell you, I don't think you should say amen in this one, <laughs> if you understand how I mean. Let's pray. Father, in the name that is above every other name, no man can function in this office except you've called and equipped him. And thank you because the calling is here, and I thank you because the equipping is here. Edify the church, glorify Jesus only. I ask that grace is poured upon my lips to establish your counsel in the hearts of your people. Lord, as you have promised, deliver in this service. Save in this service. Uplift in this service. Open eyes in this service. Bring revelation to the praise of your name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Please, you may be seated in the presence of God. So the title of my teaching this morning is Kinney Big Deal, Sex. Sure, I got the Yoruba correct. I hope we spelled it correct too. Right? Ah, you didn't see the flyer? It was correct now. If it wasn't correct, we'll hold them, the Yoruba man who did it. It won't be me. It's just a question me, so I trusted his, um, you know, and all of that. What's the big deal about sex? Now, we're still teaching the line. What's the teaching series for this month? The Covenant. We are still there. It's covenant we're talking about. So I'm going to be doing a few things, and I need your undivided attention. Make sure you're not distracted. Mute your phones if you can. Actually, you should. You should. Mine is mute already. All right, you should. The Lord is in the holy temple. Let the earth keep silent before him. Okay. So um, take it back to my scripture, please. Our text in Matthew 19, and just leave it there. So I'm going to answer the question. The title of today's service is Sex, Skinny Big Deal. All right? So I want to ask, what's the big deal about sex? What is the big deal about sex? I'm going to answer the question straight up. And then I'm going to teach along those lines. I want to answer the question. Some of you are here, online and on ground. Please help me celebrate our online church. Thank you for being a part of us. Mixella and Facebook, we celebrate you. Amen. All right, so people online and people on ground will be asking, what is really this thing about sex? What's the big deal about sex? So I want to answer the question straight up and I'll begin to teach along those lines. The big deal about sex is that sex is a covenant. That's the big deal about it. Sex is a covenant. Whether you're married or single, I don't care your status, this message concerns you. You know, sometimes married people feel that the subject of sex should be attended to by single people alone. That's a big mistake. In fact, standing in this holy office that I stand, you know what I mean by holy office? I don't mean physical office, the calling. By virtue of counseling and my experience with people, trust me, there are a lot of sexual issues in marriages. Who agrees with me? All right, just a few people, a lot. So whether you're married or single, this concerns you. So the big deal about sex is that sex is a covenant. But I want to bring, okay, I want to tell you some things before I begin to teach. How many of you grew up loving donuts? You know what donut is? It's a pastry. I don't have donut lovers here. Let me see your hand now. Answer. It's scriptural. Well, oh, you love donuts. Who? The two of you? You love donuts. But I've discovered there's a donut your generation eats that is fake. Now, so if I describe the donut I grew up with, you know, we grew up in the days of Leventis foods and um, when Mr. Biggs was, oh, so sorry, with due respect, so that they don't come after me legally. Amen? You understand what I'm saying? There's a way you talk on social media. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? All right, I can leave it there. Good. Um, when we were growing up, we had them, um, I used to love donuts and hot dog. So by the time I'm describing my donut, how I ate my donut, I'll leave you to judge if I ate fake donuts or real donut. You know there's fake donut. There's just flour in a spherical shape that you call donut, but there's real donut. 
Amen. Okay. Why is this man talking about donuts? Just hold on. So, in those days, when they make out donuts, they sprinkle lots of sugar on it. So, did I eat the fake one? But I don't see sugar in your own these days. I'm just being, you know, I, I, they just bring donuts, they think it will just be soft like bread. I said, this is bread in circle. This is just bread in circle. But the donut weird. If the sugar is not there, it's fake. We don't touch it. And, I mean, it's such a delight. I don't eat it anymore. Um, my children are into those ministries. You know, when you occupy my office, you don't think of those things. Hmm? Last week, they said to me that um, they needed pizza. So, I went to buy pizza. I didn't go with my card or cash. And um, when I got there, and they gave me the various prices, I said to my wife, are you going to know what I'm saying? You won't understand, but there was a pack that they call King Pack or something like that. And that's the only pack that can suit my family. You know, I have a battal battalion of them. Amen. So when I came back, my son asked me, what of the ice cream? <laughs> I said, look at this man. Your school, your school fees is next week. So they are into this ministry. And I know some of them will tempt me by saying it this afternoon. So I've already, I have a lot of ministry to do this afternoon. So they are going home before me. So I won't be there. Amen. Now, I grew up eating donuts. But the attraction of the donuts we ate was, it was sprinkled with sugar. Not just sprinkled. I don't think that's sprinkling. There's a way they, okay. Uh, the mothers are helping me now. You dip it inside. I don't know a mother, African mother, that did not bake. Have you observed it? Your mother didn't bake. You see the way they are talking with experience. I don't want to look for trouble, but your generations, they don't. <laughs> I didn't see anything. They just use the long fingers and, you know, they don't do all of that. <laughs> Praise God. You know, one day, my pastor woke up his wife. He said it on social media, so even the woman has, my mother in the faith has thought about it. He woke up by 2.30 a.m. and wanted to eat a particular food. I think it's on the German particular soup. And woke her up to make it 2 a.m. He's not wicked. He's one of the men that teaches me how to love my wife. So he's sound in that one. But you know what? She said, that is, that's covenant. You wake up and you pound it with joy. And she did. So, some women are looking at me now. Pastor, talk well. If he tries it. <laughs> Amen. So, sex is like this donut. It comes sprinkled with lies. Baked with lies. And before I teach this morning, I want to address four lies of sex. Can we begin from there? Now, let me ask the question again. What is the big deal about sex? I'm going to be, I'm going to be explaining it. I do, I'm not just saying it for you to accept. I'll show you in the face of scripture. Okay? From today, some of you, your life will change after today. So, lie number one is what? Casual sex. Sex is not casual. How many of you are close to your boss? Close to the sense that you can play lawn tennis together or anybody in authority. Let me see your hand. Has your boss said in a joking mood before and told you things like, stop that, but you knew he was saying it casually? But the same person comes into his office as your boss. That stop that means stop that. The difference between casual and official. So if sex is not casual, pastor, what is sex? Sex is official. It's not casual. Are you getting what I'm saying? When something is casual, it's a joke. Okay? You know, this morning I just, I don't know. I just, I told my wife, she has been telling me not to do it. Let me confess now. It's good to listen to your wife. So I say, I just feel like when I want to wear jeans and tie, she would tell me, no, 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 wear a suit. <laughs> So I've said it for months, months. So yesterday I said, she said, it's okay, you can wear. 
when I entered the service and I said, who sent you a message? I'm just, I'm just talking about me. I said, so, you know, because there's, if you're going to be official, I'm not saying this is wrong, so that you don't look at pastors who dress like this and say they're not spiritual. They're spiritual. But what I'm saying is that there's a, there's a dressing that only fits an official function. Are you getting what I'm saying? Good. So if you say sex is casual, the enemy has tricked you because sex is not casual. It is very official. And anything that is official has a lot of things attached to that office. Number one. Number two, number two lie, sex, okay. Please, oh, let me warn you. I try to be very explicit as a teacher, but I'm not going to be vulgar. I'm going to be saying some strong things. Is that fine? Yes, sir. There's no teenager here. Is that okay? Okay. You know, one of the things about church people is that they pretend. And they are now bound and captives. I have ministered to all sorts. I have ministered to two lesbians. I mean, a lady. No, you know, some of you see it in the movies. I have sat with a lesbian and ministered deliverance to a lesbian. These things are real. In church. And she's in choir. And she loves God. But she's bound. Oh, I've met homosexuals. <laughs> I won't mention the name. Somebody in this church. My wife is laughing. Before this work started, he went to just visit a brother. The guy was dragging his boxers from morning till dawn. He was shocked. It was warfare. You know when you stay awake because a man is trying to defile you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Inside church. But the Bible calls the church the pillar and the ground of truth. If we don't talk about these truths on the ground of truth, we're in trouble. Oh, administer to us. us. That was what took me to study the life of Donnie McClurkin, how the seed of homosexuality was sown in his life. He was raped by his uncle. Three years later, raped by his cousin. That's the, the child to that man. So you can see that there's what they call family pattern is real. The hold of sexuality, homosexuality, is in that lineage. Okay, so I said all of that to let you know that be comfortable when I begin to unravel this thing. Is that fine? Okay, so... There's this thing called quickie. How many of you know what quickie is? You see why I want you now? All right. That's why I want you. There's nothing quickie about sex. There's no quickie sex. The lie of the devil is to make you feel it's, a, it's just quickie. All right? But that quickie has a long journey you have entered. The journey is so long. There's, you see, the dev, I've told you, the devil is good at giving fine names to sin and make you comfortable with it. I've told you one of the names I hate. What's the name? Affair. She had an affair. It's a lie. She didn't have an affair. She committed adultery. That's more weighty. I'm not judging you. Are you getting what I'm saying? She, you fornicated. It's not an affair. So you call things what they are. Sex, there's nothing like quick you. It's a, it's a sugar coating on the donut. There's no quickie sex. That, in fact, all the quickies you have had took you on long journeys and you have got to be delivered from the journeys. That quickie that stopped in two minutes or five minutes, depending on the environment of the quickie, can take you a road of 20 years because sex is a covenant. I'm just giving you points I'm coming to teach. How many lies have we talked about? Line number three. Oh Lord, help me. Help me, Jesus. I've seen relationships where people say things like, they're already having sex and fornicating. And the girl is saying, I don't want to get pregnant. You know, some people don't have sexual relationships in courtship, not because they know of it is a sin. Who's getting what I'm talking about? They just want, don't want to be caught. And when you're pregnant, you're caught. Are you getting what I'm saying? Okay. So, for the girl, use protection. Somebody is saying, what is pastor doing this morning? I am dealing with situations. They are keeping quiet, but they know I'm talking to them. Just relax. So the girl is, I need them. Um, no, use protection. And I'm going to talk about protection. There's nothing like protection from scripture. When it comes to covenant, there's no protection. But the guy's problem is, I don't want protection. Does anybody understand what I'm saying? See what they now say. I'm sure you've heard this word, skin to skin. Line number three. There's no skin to skin in sex. 
It is soul to soul. That thing you call skin to skin is soul to soul. And this is what a condom comes in. A condom cannot cover it. If you use a condom, it's still soul to soul. Not skin to skin. These are lies. Number what next? You hear people say, um, okay, I, I, I interviewed someone who called me in the middle of the night. He's in ministry now. And it gives me great joy to see that the Lord is using him in his denomination. I got a call about 2 a.m. Pastor, I just fornicated. I like people who call it what it is. Because you can help them. I said, what happened? He said, Pastor, I brought her to my house and she's somebody, you know, I'm following up in the faith. I said that you brought her to your house. To, she has followed you up. She, you know, she's the one that followed him up. She followed him up. The Bible says her house is the highway filling the blank space. She's the one that followed him up. I said, that's mistake number one. Never do that again in your life. Because you are flesh. Amen? No man carries fire to his bosom and is not burnt. Married or not. In fact, married, you are in more danger. So, I was, began to ask, what led to it? He said, Pastor, and the funny thing is that it was just so natural. No. It's lie number four. It's not natural. It's supernatural. And I'm going to be explaining these things as I teach. Ladies, I, well, I don't want to ask you so that you don't answer me and people don't think funny. But you know what I mean when some ladies say, it was, Pastor, it just happened naturally. There was no struggle. No. That was not a natural transaction. It was a supernatural transaction. Now I want to begin to teach. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 19, he said, they asked him a question. Oh God, Moses said, because to them Moses was, this, was the apex of authority. Moses said, you know, once we are tired of our wives, in fact, it's in the law. He said, just prepare your paper. So you see this divorce paper, it didn't start today. Give her a bill of divorcement and you put her away. And Jesus said, listen to me. Jesus brought the higher law. He said, Moses said that because of your, the hardness of your heart. But from the beginning, it was not so. So see what Jesus said. Jesus said, on no account should you divorce your wife. I'm standing on sacred ground, and I'm about to rattle a very sensitive cage. Listen to me well, so you don't misquote me. Let me give you some examples. That your wife deceived you, and you have been paying rent to her for 10 years, and you found out. How many of you remember that case? And the guy went into a coma. According to scriptures, hear me in context. When you wake up from that coma, you can't divorce her. Oh, this place is quiet. You can't. Jesus said, no account. I'm going somewhere. Number two. Pastor, he beats me. Hear me well. On no account. Should you raise your hand on your wife? If you do, you are a beast that has got to be kept in a zoo. No human being, no human being, born of another human being, that they give you as a wife, and you say she provoked you and you raise your hand. You can raise your voice. Is that permitted? When you get angry, can I talk to real people here? Ah. You can shout. Shout, please. But by no means, raise your hand. It is not acceptable. Because some people use this scripture to say, Jesus said you can't divorce on any ground. So this is my counsel. I have counseled many situations like that. Many. When your husband is beating you, you can't divorce him. Am I correct? Oh, I know it's hard. But what should you do? Separate from him. There are two different things. And that separation can be for a lifetime. Because marriage is beyond living together. Is anybody getting what I'm saying? I'm, I'm saying what Jesus said. What Jesus said is very tough. Tough. What, this tells you that if you are single, be careful before you marry. It's a, it's a serious matter. You can't come out to. Oh, my wife is laughing. Are you getting what I'm saying? Let me tell this generation. This thing you want, I want to marry, I want to marry, I want to marry. You see that fire? There are some things that can quench it once. And you... And you Face to face with your reality. You can't go. Oh, pastor, if you see the way she speaks to me with such contempt. Covenant. You stay inside there. 
But Jesus gives one clause. He said, except on one case. And that's where I'm coming this morning. Can you imagine? Can I talk to women who beat their husbands? Because sometimes, now I know you are going to laugh. Sometimes, we say, men, don't touch your wives. Don't raise your hand on your wives. But there are many women that beat their husbands. I have been involved in one myself. Not that she boxed him. She slapped him. He broke his nose. He bled. He, let me tell you what you did. You hit my nose. You hit my nose. You called her name. I'll call her name. So you raise your hand and break my nose. He was bleeding. My, my two eyes. I might not have seen five, but I've seen one. Oh, so let me speak to the men. Pastor, you don't understand. I can't say that. She beats me in the middle of the night. It's covenant. Are you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you will only separate for your life and for them to work on your relationship by counsel, counseling and all of that. But that you divorce. Jesus said you can't divorce on that ground. Am I correct? See, this is why somebody understands my voice is saying, is it this serious? Is this serious? That's why you must check out that guy before you say yes. You must check out that girl before you propose. Be sure. There's no escape route. Though. In fact, there are two ways in which you can escape this covenant called marriage. It is through fornication or death. Covenant is death. Do you know? It's death. People don't know. So we come to the wedding with a lot of excitement and razzmatazz and I, I don't have problems with that. But I ask myself, do these people know? So that when the things start happening, do they know what they have entered? Oh, I didn't know I married a stupid woman. Okay? There's some element of stupidity in you that attracted that stupidity. It's covenant. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Your spouse is a reflection of something in you. Before you say yes to a man, there's something in him that is in you. Kaskia. So when you call her, you, are a, you see, you're a very mad woman. You are looking at a madman too. Because my Bible tells me that deep, call it unto the deep. You see, your marriage choice shows us a lot about who you are. Your value system and your level in the realm of the spirit. Your husband like this and your wife is a reflection of you. In case you don't know. Don't say, I made a mistake. They told me. Mm -mm. The reason why you didn't listen to them is because there's something in you that is in that person that connected you. That's why you didn't listen. It's getting really quiet in this house. God is working, right? Amen. As you see my wife, there's a lot of things in me about her. If she wakes up one day and says, Ah, I don't know why I married such a hard-hearted... I'm not hard-hearted. All right, I'm just giving an example. I have to use myself as an example. If I use you, you may get angry. Okay? I don't know why... <laughs> you know, Paul says, the scripture says, We are counted as sheep for the slaughter every day. So, that's ministry. I don't know why I married such a hard-hearted man. It's because there's something in you that is hard-hearted. That's why even when people were telling you, don't marry him, don't marry him, the heart, the heart was hard. You couldn't listen to Kamsel. So, can you quit this issue of calling your spouse names because you are calling yourself names? Stop it. And face marriage. One of the messages I listened to by Reverend Sam Adiemi many years ago was, the title was, Accept Your Spouse. Some people have married, but they've not accepted their spouse. I know you prefer your colleague. That's because you are not married to your colleague. The day you marry your colleague, you will observe that the Lord was merciful to, you, merciful to you. I've often told you that the guest preacher is always anointed, much more than the pastor, until he becomes your pastor. I won't mention the name, a pastor in this city. A lady just who's had children, I don't know, I think her husband was dead, her kids were abroad. She should be in her 50s from the description, right? She fell in love with her pastor. Now, her pastor is a divorcee. So she will come to church, and the pastor is a fine teacher of God's word. If I mention his name, there's nobody that doesn't know him. But I won't mention his name. He will come and teach and teach and teach, and she won't be listening to the word of God again. So she knew by her background in the faith that she was in trouble. As the man is teaching, she would just be imagining that this man would just, he's a divorcee, she doesn't have a husband. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. She, was, she wasn't being fed by the word of God again, nothing. So she called her friend, who is a pastor that I know, I preach in that one's church. And said, I'm in trouble, ma. Now, the, this her friend is in her 60s. Right? No, yes, no. She's in her 60s. 
and told you, my friend, I'm in love with my pastor, there's a problem. Okay? It's just, there's just something about the man and all of that. So the woman said, you don't know him, that's why. It's pulpit you are seeing. Are you getting what I'm saying? There is anointing, you know, and there's person. This one is anointed. Now, I'm not saying I don't behave well. I behave well. Are you getting what I'm saying? <laughs> because some people can say, you know, see, I used to tell you, say, in safe get problem. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that even Kenneth Hagin on pulpit may not be Kenneth Hagin at home. One day, Kenneth Hagin was, they were trying to fix furniture in their house. He has stretched his faith to get the house. He said, Father of faith, he said, he, he doesn't have faith for anything. The woman just came and said, We need drapes. You know what they call drapes now, back in the days. You know, put it around the house. He looked at the woman. He said, I don't have one ounce of faith for drapes. My faith is exhausted. The woman from that point released her faith and drapes came. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You would think that Kenny Hagen, the father of faith, will have faith for drapes. But he said his faith was exhausted. So there's anointing and then there's depressing. That's why it's called man of God. There are two things there. Man, humanity, God, divinity. Because some of you may see somebody in his gifting and you are saying, I wish I can just be his wife. You may not really wish so. You may not wish so. How did I get to this topic? Okay, so let me get back to what I was saying. So we agree that on no ground should you divorce your spouse. Do we all agree? That's what Jesus said. But Jesus gave one clause. What did he say? Except what? You see what Jesus called it? He didn't call it an affair. Can you put it up? And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, can you see his wife? Because he's always meant that looking for divorce. I'm putting it, you get what I'm saying? <laughs> Very few women want divorce. Because a woman, once she's in it, she's committed for life. There's something about a woman. When a woman says to death, do us part. Um, maybe not some in this generation. Let me put this. Ah, these ones. <laughs> this one is not to death, do us part. You near the smell of death or any issue they run. Anyway, except it be for fornication. Jesus called it what? One more time. Say Why? Think about it. Why should sex be the, is sex fornication? So, Jesus said the only reason why this covenant can be broken is what? Is what? Sex with another person. So, even if he's beating you, Jesus said don't divorce. He's lying to you, Jesus said no divorce. You've done all crazy things. In fact, she has abused your mother. And you're getting ready to abuse back your family. Jesus said, no divorce. But the moment sex enters, he said, you can divorce. Please think about it. This is huge. <sighs> Holy Ghost, come with your wife. I can trust the both of you that you won't misunderstand me. Come. I know she doesn't... Uh, She'll be like, Pastor has done it again, but I'm Pastor. That's why I'm Pastor. Come. Praise God. Come, come, come. That's why I'm Pastor. Amen. So, this is husband and wife. You can see that. You can see the resemblance. What do people call this man? Anko. I don't know why people call it. What's the meaning of that? Anko. Is it Yoruba? Oh, uniform. Uh -huh. Anko. So, come close, come close, come close, come close. So, they're a beautiful couple. What joined them together? What joined these two people together? I'm asking you, marriage. Please explain. What do you mean by marriage? No, 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 no. We have marriage. There are different types of marriage. Some people do court wedding. Some people do traditional wedding. Not everybody does white wedding. In fact, I'm pastoring somebody now who's telling me that if, if they need be, she doesn't want white wedding. And it's not a sin. So what makes them married? Covenant. Break it down. Thank you. Sex. It is sex. And I will show you in the face of scripture. So, I don't want to use a thought party. That would be too strong. So I'll just use an imaginary thought party. Is that okay? <laughs> Jesus said, they can't divorce on any ground. If she likes, let her wake up in the morning as the husband is sleeping on the bed. Maybe he annoyed her. She goes in the middle of the night by 2 a.m. and nods his head. Boom! You understand what I'm saying? Just him. Boom! 
Ulo shiburuku. And he wakes up. And he's like, what was that for? And she goes to the door, you, I will, I've seen it. I've seen people say, you, I will deal with you in this life. I'll frustrate you. And then she calls first her mom and says, can you imagine? I was sleeping. You thought I nodded my head. And the mom would be like, no, I don't understand. Is she a footballer? Now. <laughs> After all of that, bro, 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 can they divorce? You see, let's settle it. If you want to do it God's way, do it God's way. They can't divorce. But the moment, God forbid, either of them goes and have sex with somebody else, God said they can divorce. You know why? It takes, watch this, it is only a covenant that can counsel a covenant. Yeah. It takes only a covenant to counsel another covenant. That's why, listen, for many people who were in covenant with Satan, the moment they got born again and received Christ, they became free. Translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son. Only covenant can counsel covenant. What Jesus is saying here is very huge. The only thing that can separate these two people is another covenant. That's why I start, started by asking you, what makes them married? It's not the wedding. It's not the fact that, let, can I shock you? It's not the vows, the exchange. Are the vows important? Yes, no. What makes them married is sexual communion. Thank you. Celebrate them for me. You know? It's not easy. When I pastor you, I can use you as an example. So I celebrate them. Do you get what I'm saying? Do you see where Jesus is coming from now? So can you see how powerful sex is? So when you say quickie, casual sex, is a lie. It is marriage. Let me tell you something. Many people are married to many people. Many people are walking on the streets of Lagos and married to five men. But they don't know. Many men, I'm just a man, that's how we are. We make sure understand. And you are sleeping with everything. It is marriages in the spirit. And I will show you scriptures. Paul said, don't you know that he who sleeps with an harlot is one. That's marriage. What's the definition of marriage? The Bible says, they twin shall become. Jesus said it here. So what's the definition of one? Sex. So the same way he became one with his wife is the same way a man sleeps with a prostitute and becomes one. Sex. That's why the devil is so much after sex to destroy destinies. And the enemy quotes it with too much pleasure. This is the generation that somebody will boldly, boldly come out and tell you that one day my pastor was ministering to a girl that was under the yoke of a devil. And he asked her, who are you? What do you do? She was manifesting. She said, I service men. My pastor said, what did you say? He, he, he couldn't believe it. Yet. And she was saying, brother, that that's her job. She, I service men. You understand what I mean by servicing? It's her job description. So my, my pastor said, how do you start ministering deliverance to that one? She feels this an occupation. I service men. I don't break their homes. I just service them. Auntie, you are servicing covenants. Covenants. I have ministered to some people by the grace of God who were highly demonized and it was all from sexual covenants that they had with people. She's manifesting and strong spirits are speaking out. And you ask her a question, she tells you, there's nobody she doesn't sleep with. Except the person is a dead person. So do you agree now that the covenant is what? What makes you married is what? Sex. And I'm going to show you from scripture. How did Jesus break the old covenant? By introducing the new covenant. So you see that now? Until Jesus died and shed his blood, the old covenant was in force. The moment you sleep with somebody else, and you are married to somebody else, you have entered another covenant. In fact, many people are divorced already without knowing. By virtue of the fact that they've slept with somebody else. It's only covenant that can cancel covenant. The 
Genesis chapter 2 verse 24. I want to show you something as we go on. Genesis 2 24. Because I'm going to be praying over people today. And if you know you are bound already and you're beginning to see some funny patterns in your life because of probably sexual promiscuity in the past. I'm not going to call you for because of privacy and all of that. But as I begin to pray, open up your spirit because there will be deliverance for you. I'm persuaded about that one. Genesis chapter 2 verse 24. Not here to excite you but to liberate you. Genesis 2 24. Oh, you're there. So, I'm going to be asking a question, so read this. Can we read together? Two, three, go. Therefore shall he leave his and shall what? And they twin shall become what's the definition of one flesh? I gave you the expo, but what is the definition? What's the proof? If I go to an unbeliever and I say these two people have become one flesh, what is the Bible definition of one flesh? I have taught you that whenever something is not clear in scripture, how should you interpret it? Huh? Scripture will interpret 1 Corinthians 6. So let's see what one flesh... Let's not assume we know what one flesh means. Some, may, many people have become one flesh with many people. Can I tell you what... I'll say this one then. I'll address one aspect of sex. 16. 616. What? What do you think Paul meant by this? What? Sure you know sex was happening in this church. Huh? It was crazy that even one man walked up to his father and slept with his wife. So Paul, the father over that congregation, is coming with pastoral bulala. Everyone, every now and then, a pastor should do that to sanitize the house. Jesus also did that. Came one day with Cain and they were shocked flogged all of them out of the place. I'm sure the disciples were, were wondering what happened. Because he was always a calm person. He flogged them out. And nobody, you know, if Jesus flogs you, I believe it's supernatural flogging. Are you going to say? Think about it. If Jesus flogs you, he will flog things. <laughs> Just the way he saved you and saved you well. Are you going to say? <laughs> because whatever he does, he does well. I think Jesus needs to come back with such canes in this season and to do some things. I'm just joking. Amen. <laughs> because of the blood of his son. Amen. It says, Paul said, what? Calculating all he was hearing. What am I hearing? So he says. Now, this is also to tell you that many people were sleeping with prostitutes in the church. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He said, know ye not that he which is joined. See, see the strong word Paul is using. Joined. Oh, I just had fun with her. We had, it was a one night stand. It was not a one night stand. It is a one life stand. You and her, has, you have entered what they call spiritual one chance. There's nothing like one, one night stand. These are just fine languages by the devil to entrap destinies. Paul says joined. Oh, the next time you sleep with a woman, think of joining. Whether she's your wife or not. And I'm going to tell you why couples should be having sex regularly. I'll tell you that. It's a mystery in Zion. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. This side has gone quiet. It says, Know ye not that which is joined to an harlot is what? What did we just read now? There shall be one flesh. So what's the definition of one? It says, For the two saith he, where was this said? First, but Jesus reiterated it. Jesus said, you become what? One flesh. Now, on what account? Paul is explaining to us now how you become one flesh. What is Paul saying here? Sex makes you one flesh. This is scripture interpreting scripture. On the authority of God's word, I declare, listen to me. Everybody you have sex with, you have become one flesh with. On the authority of God's word. So imagine you slept, you know, in those days on campus, some guys were always bragging, ah, one day, when I went to, when, when we moved to Festac and I was renovating the house, I was going there every day for Malakbury when we were living. 
So I would have to wait for some workers. If you know these artisans, you give them 10 o'clock, they come 4. I don't know if you've ever experienced that. So I would have to sit down in one each retreat. Tantalize so us on 21 Road. You know, I grew up in that environment, so kind of know my way around. So I just sat down and just reminiscing on how this place used to be when I was, a, you know, much younger. <laughs> you know, there are some things you see in the movie. A guy just sat, you know, the, you know these tables there, sat opposite me and was waiting for one of his friends. And the, friend, the guy just came and they hugged and all of that. And he just, he said, sit this guy, sit this guy, sit this guy. Uh -uh. I, I sleep with this one last week, man. I'm using good words. That's not what they said. I hear what I'm saying. I was shocked. And the guy was telling him, Bado. He says, this one. Ah, this one says, the same day, huh? They are feeling fly. But it's in future he will understand that he has activated covenants. Activated covenants. So Paul said, anyone who sleeps with anybody is one flesh. So this is why if you don't sleep, if you get married, we come to your wedding and you don't sleep with your spouse. You don't consummate that marriage. You are not married. Now, I want to address something. Why should couples regularly, I'm, I'm stepping on very dangerous and sensitive grounds now. Why should couples have sex? From what I have taught. What did I teach on Wednesday about the communion? It says every time we break bread, what do Paul said? We do show. So he knows he's been defeated, but every time we break bread, he is angry. You remind him of his defeat. Every time you have sex in the marriage covenant, you, what's the English word to use? I have to be careful here. You reaffirm. Have you clicked refresh button on your laptop before? That's what you do when you have sex in the covenant. Are you hearing what I'm saying? In the covenant. Because that is what the covenant is. Now, why is the covenant? Because blood is involved. There is no covenant without blood. That's why there's nothing casual about blood affair. Why is sex a covenant? It, is, it, it involves blood. Except there's no blood in your vein. And you see that blood that is released? Covenant has been caught. Jesus said, this is the new covenant in my blood. You can't talk covenant and not talk blood. The Hebrews understand the, covenant, uh, the, the aspect of covenant a lot. Malachi chapter 2 verse 14. Let's dig this thing some more. Malachi chapter 2 verse 14. Now, I want to say something. I asked the Holy Ghost if I should say it. Something that happened. And he gave me a release. And I sensed that release. But I'm going to say it with caution. And please, I am not, I'm not saying you should go and do this. And don't build a doctrine on it. What did I say, please? Don't build a doctrine on it. There are some things we see that happens. That if you say it, some people will just go and start doing it. And flow into error. There's a couple in Port Harcourt. That I was privileged to have, a, have contact with. They had challenges. Have you seen like Job from one problem to another problem as a couple to another problem? It was so bad. I don't know who gave this man this idea. Do you know what he did? Him and the wife went to have sex. And on the platform of that sexual covenant, they began to declare. Uh, you see why I was struggling to say it? It was when the situation turned, they told us. Which means one of them caught a revelation of what sex is in marriage. So what they were saying, premised on this covenant, and I'm going to tell you who is the witness to, it, to the covenant. There's one witness in every covenant. Every time you have sex, somebody comes inside your room. I'll show you in scriptures. You know who he is? God. Oh, pastor, you mean when I'm sleeping with my boyfriend? Yes. You know why? He respects covenant. You didn't hear that. Now, what do you mean? It's illegal. You can enter a covenant illegally. Like the Gibeonites did with Israel. They pretended and entered covenant with them. Now, the question is, why didn't God wipe them out 
when God observed that it was deceit because he respects covenant why did God come when you were having sex with somebody who you're not involved with because he respects covenant yeah he's not endorsing it he has tied himself to anybody who comes into this act is invoking a covenant and I respect covenant whether it's legal or illegal now what did they do to the children of Gibeon could they kill them were they sent to kill them before but they couldn't kill them so permanently they were what that is what happens when you have sex with somebody you are not married to it is illegal but it's in force but there's something it does it reduces you how can you be in com- covenant makes us equal but we are the given is equal they said we will make you fetchers of water and hewers of wood so forever they were just fetching a, 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 a hebrews boy would just sit down and the gibeonite will bring water wash the feet and they need they need fire you know to warm up something they will send the gibeonite they are in covenant but they were lesser every time you have sex with someone you're not married to you get into a covenant but you operate from a lesser, lesser platform in life I admonish you by the mercies of God, anything called sexual covenant, activate it legally. Don't come through the back door. Don't come through the back door. Malachi 2.14, are you there? Okay, it says, Yet ye say, wherefore, because the Lord had been witness between thee and thy wife, against whom thou hast dealt treacherously, yet is she thy companion, and the wife of what according to the teaching and scriptures what makes a husband and wife come into a covenant what is it so do you know this means that god is recording the fact that i knew when you enacted this covenant and activated it with sex i'll show you some things can i go on a little further to bring understanding because in this generation, we don't have a proper understanding of sex. The next time you see an opportunity for sex, some of you, if you apply this truth, you will look for the nearest window and run. It's covenant. It's covenant. Why do you think a man and a woman will marry and something in the man's lineage will flow into their children? Blood covenant. <laughs> this morning, I saw my son. He does it. I've been observing. I don't talk much. In any, once he wakes up and there's cold, if the place goes, he begins to sneeze. I won't tell you which one of them. He sneezes. Fan or dust, he begins to sneeze. I mean, I didn't say, Sh-. have you seen somebody sneeze for one hour, two hours? That's me. It's blood. However, the Holy Ghost brought to my notice one day. I've never said it, but I've dealt with it. Remember, this is how your asthma was activated. So shut the door now. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. That's how it happened to me. Chronic asthma. That's how it happened. And I'm beginning to see the sign. I, I want to say some things. There was somebody who attended the conference who did that too. But it's asthmatic. That sneezing pattern. Where did he come from? How did it enter him now? You don't like it? You know, all of you tell good stories about yourself. You see, men of God too have got infirmities in the flesh. You understand what I mean by infirmity in the flesh? I'm not saying I have cancer. No, that's, that's not infirmity. That's an assault. I'm saying that traits in the bloodline. So whenever he's doing that, my wife knows. I told my wife, I get concerned because I understand what he's going through. It makes you uncomfortable. How did we bring him to this world? The covenant. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Some of you are not, you're not talking again? It's covenant. You don't know it's covenant. Okay. I'll say something and I'll close. Every covenant has a sign, right? For instance, was there a sign to the Noahic covenant, the covenant with Noah? What was the sign? You agree? Any covenant you see without a sign is fake. 
What was the sign of the Abrahamic covenant? Huh? If you want to know if somebody is the seed of Abraham back then, just tell him to strip. Am I lying? Don't tell people to strip. I'm just saying that if you want to find out the seed of Abraham according to the flesh. That's why Paul was telling them, he said, I am a Hebrew of the Hebrews. Then what did he say? Circumcised on the eighth day. That's the proof that you carry the Abrahamic covenant. There must be a mark on the body. That's why God was angry with Moses when he was telling other people to circumcise their children, but refused to circumcise his own child. So Abraham's children did not carry the mark of the covenant that God had with Israel. Every covenant carries a sign. What is the, co- the, the sign of the new covenant that you are born again? Some of you will feel this one. There's a physical sign that you are born again. Huh? A sign that is seen. Because every token is seen. Get that one now. Did you, do you see rainbows today? Huh? Which, one, which other covenant did we just talk about now? The circumcision. Do you see it? Do you know they still do it today? Yes. Did you still do it? They mark their skins. Okay. Can you see it? Yes. Okay. Can you see the Holy Spirit? My pastor daughter said, uh, ex- except they speak in tongues. Okay. What if they don't speak in tongues? Do you know there are believers that don't speak in tongues? Do you know Billy Graham doesn't speak in tongues? Didn't speak in tongues? Yeah. It was from the Baptist movement. All his assignment was be saved, salvation. He stuck with his assignment and his, he was great. Now, that's not a license for you not to speak in tongues. If you do it, you'll be afflicted of the devil in these last days. That's one of our weapons. I'm telling you, oh my God, talking tongues. My God. It's a powerful mystery, so don't, don't make that mistake. You know, the Bible says one generation shall praise your God to another one. So you must build up on what the Father's brought. Back to what I was saying. So what is the sign of the new covenant? The physical sign. What are baptism? Yeah. The moment you do, boom, what are you doing? His death. And what? Resurrection. That's why they are fighting the water baptism, telling you it's no longer in force. It's a lie from the pit of hell. It's a sign. It's not saying that that's what makes you saved. No. Every covenant has a token, a sign. So let me talk about the token of marriage. It's not the ring. Now, I don't go anywhere. The only place I go without this one is my bathroom. You saw when I was teaching last week, I told women, to st- any married person here that doesn't wear the ring, I'll fight you. you said, I said that. Okay. So I believe in wearing it. People must know. Amen? This place has gone quiet. If you are married, you should wear your ring. You should wear a ring because some people will come and tell you they didn't know. So, Please don't, uh, you know, and if you, if you, the devil is wicked. If you get approached and you say, no, 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 I'm married, I'm married, I'm married, no, 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 but you're not wearing a ring. The devil can capitalize on the fact that you were approached. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And begins to give you ideas that even after four children, I still got it going on. That's, that's what happened with evil. Before you know, you begin to respond to your husband in a certain way. I'm still cheeky and none of that. Wear your ring. Kajiko, I love you as a pastor. That's what I'm telling you. Wait. Let's know. Men, too, wear your ring. Don't be responsible. I suspect a man who doesn't wear a ring. I'm sorry to say that. I know it's strong. Yeah. If you're married and you're not wearing your ring, I, I'm not comfortable with you. Except you didn't use a ring to exchange. So you should wear a ring. Look at your fathers. They wear their rings. I'm not talking about biological fathers. Your father's in faith. Okay, uh, IBK is laughing at me. <laughs> Your father doesn't wear his ring. <laughs> he doesn't say, yes, I know, men, 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 ring, ring, bow. Are these children not proof? These children, are they not proof enough? Did they fall from the sky? But when I look at my apostolic fathers, they wear their rings. My pastor, in fact, he has them in set. There's one I saw when, I was, when he was counseling with me one time. I said, there are rings. I told my wife when I came back. I said, there are rings or there are rings. Oh, boy. Have you seen silver that you will hate gold? You don't understand. Quality. 
Oh, you debo, where's his ring? I debo you. Where's his ring? And the Bible says you should be followers of faith. Of them. You see, I'm stepping on. You will pray for me after this service because I'm stepping on sacred ground. So men, I'm shaking them very well. So wear your rings. But that's not the sign that you're married. The sign of the marital covenant is sex. The token that you're married is not the ring. It's sex. So many people are having the token of a covenant. How can you say you have nothing to do with him, you are just friends with benefits? You don't understand. The sex is a token, which means a covenant has been activated. What is friends with benefits? The only benefit that you should have, that kind of benefit, the only platform you should have that kind of benefit, is the marital covenant. Are you getting what I'm saying? So what is the sign of the marital covenant? Show me something as I close. I brought my notes so that I can just rush up. Genesis chapter 24 verse 67. Help me, media. Genesis 24 67. So the next time he walks up to you and he says, you know, uh, how do they do it these days? Somebody help me. I want to set somebody up. Help me. How do they do it these days? You know how they do it? When a guy wants to have sex with somebody he's not married with, how do they do it? Nobody wants to answer. You, want, you don't want to follow my trap. You're smart. Because I will ask you how you know. Um, you know what? I don't even know what to say because I didn't do it. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> but at least the baritone voice will come. And that kind of music I told you about. <laughs> it will set the atmosphere. <laughs> you know the song now? Can you remember the song? You can't. And she sing it. No. It's amazing how you know me. <laughs> Nobody ever make me feel. What is this song about? Nobody ever make me feel like wow. Are you not getting what I'm saying? That's the it's, that's the road to the covenant. So she has said that's the road to the covenant. The next time he comes, tell him. This is covenant. In fact, my pastor's wife said this in a very terrible way that I felt it was too hard, but she's correct. She said, every man here, hear me. What did she say again? She said, the next time you climb on a woman, whether it's climb on a woman or climb however you climb, all right? Yeah, because some people may just take it, they mean, okay, no. Anyhow, you can. The moment you want to have sex with a woman that is not your wife, whether you're married or not, whether you're single or married, just as she opens her leg, that's what she said, right? Just see a shark inside. She said, as, as you, open, you see that thing? He says, that's a shark waiting for your destiny. <laughs> you know, as you people are laughing. And she wasn't laughing, no. She said, she said, because that is the best way to know what you're getting into. That's a shark. So just imagine that's the matter of shark. <laughs> One of my mentors said, Whenever he travels abroad, one of the ways he keeps himself sexually sane, all right, is that whenever he sees any woman that his body reacts to, sometimes he goes to London to preach, maybe stay two weeks or three weeks, and he feels sexual. Is that a sin? It's not a sin, all right? Okay, and he feels that way. He said he just, any lady that appears to him, he just sees, uh, my wife remember, HIV, HIV positive, HIV positive. That's, that's how he keeps himself. He said no matter, even the girl that comes to serve him, you know, in the hotel or the protocol, he just sees HIV positive. That's why he does his friends. You're positive, you're positive, you're positive. I don't want to be, you're positive. You're positive. HIV positive, you're positive. Find girl like this, as the girls move like this, say HIV positive. There's nobody that is negative until you get home. Only your wife is HIV negative. You are laughing. And he means it too. In fact, it's so serious that whenever any of his friends goes to preach as covenant brothers, okay, as you are there preaching for four days, every woman is HIV positive. So that you can return back home. Not having brought extra covenants to your home. There's nothing casual about sex. So that had monition, although it was very strong, I think it should be applied. 
whether SAC or HIV, whichever works for you, adopt one. Adopt one. Reverend Sam Adeyemi said, why am I calling these people? To let you know that, you know, some of you think you are under demonic attack because you feel like having sex. You're not under demonic attack. It's God that put it there. But because you are not an animal, you can't have it everywhere and anywhere. Oh, that's the definition of an animal. One of the things that I find strange is for a woman to say, I don't know who the father is. Don't get me wrong. I believe in recovery. One of the things I find offensive, because that is actually the def I don't want to say that. You know, it's a dog that may not know the father. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's a dog, a pregnant dog that may not be able to tell you, is this one? A human being shouldn't say that. You must know who planted the seed. That also means you can't just have sex with anybody. We're not talking about this thing. That's why in the church of Jesus Christ, in fact, my pastor said, if they start conducting DNA in churches, many churches will break. And it's true. If they try it, and I didn't say hospitals, that one that they're contemplating is their own, that in church, we say DNA for every child. Churches will scatter. I'm saying the truth. Not this one anyway. No, not this one. Because we sanitize it from the head. Are you know what I'm saying? No, not this one. That's why I'm teaching. I'm not just teaching to excite you. I'm teaching to free you. The next time somebody comes to you for sex that is not married to you, HIV positive or shark. I have never quoted him. I take from people. I'm on time, right? I take from people, even if you don't totally agree with them. I listen to Baba Kumi when. You know, I've told you, I am old school in new school container. I'm a chip of the old block. I am. Because I've discovered that school is the school that lasts. This one, pia, 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 pia. they don't last. So I listen to, he knows, I don't know if you remember one time, I told you to gather me the message of Billy Akani. I chew on it, yet I'm wearing jeans. Are you seeing it? I was listening to DK Olukoya one day. That's powerful, the most powerful messages I've ever heard on sex. What's the title of that message? Dancing at the gates of hell. When I listen to that thing, how some pastors have even lost their ministries? By entering a wrong shack. Let me put it that way. There was one he was ministering to. The guy, when he wants to... Okay, the lady is a serpent that is inside her. When you make have intercourse with her, it's pleasurable. But it's a serpent inside. I mean, you know that that ministry is strong on deliverance. You know that one, huh? He said the thing was so strong. And she asked her, how many people have you... He asked, he asked her, how many people have you slept with? She said, there's no counting including pastors. There was one that comes out, she's a student of Unilag, but she comes out from the water every morning, nobody knows where she lives. Oh, you, you, that one can't be ugly. Have you observed, you, you know, it can't be ugly. When she comes out, she'll be like the brighter morning star. I'm tempted, you want to give me something? All right, praise God. Amen. Oh, yes, yes, I remember. I am tempted to tell you, I'll end with the story of my own mother, my biological mother. My wife has heard this from my mother. My mother had a colleague that was driving home, you remember the story, and picked up a beautiful girl that he wanted to drop off. So the guy said, This place is okay. He said, No, 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 just tell me where your house is. I'll, I'll drop you. So he, 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 he started liking the girl. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I think he had sex with her. Okay. So, Came another day, picked her up there. She just dropped, waved, picked her up there. All right? And they had to like it. And they went to have sex. My mother's colleague. They had sex. So one day, after having sex, immediately they had sex. Immediately they had sex. He came back. He had a head from the girl. Went into the house. Went into the house. He met an old woman. I said, he's looking for so-so-and-so. She dropped what she was doing. He said, I don't understand. Where are you from? 
Because the guy had died a long time. My mother's colleague, it's not uh, that you hear a story from WhatsApp. He said, uh, uh, because she didn't know him as one of the daughter's friends. He said, that's my daughter and she's dead. He must say, no, no, no. I dropped her here. No, madam, I don't think you know her. Uh, she had to go and bring proof and bring picture. He says, this guy he said, yes. Oh boy. The guy almost ran mad. So all these things that we are hearing is true. It's covenant. What did she come to do? Court covenant. And until he's free, he won't know what is worrying him throughout his life. That covenant has got to be broken. From that day ahead, he never picked any woman again on the road. It's not like he's wrong, but from that day, you know what they call jump and pass? You drive and pass. It's covenant. So all of you, that just like having sex anyhow. Just behave like I'm not talking to you. Just think I'm talking to the next person. Be very careful. You are cutting covenants. If he cannot wait, let him go. And if she cannot wait, because I discovered some can't wait these days too. Some she's. Let her go. And if you are married under the sound of my voice, you have slept with somebody before. Let me tell you what to do. Go and close the covenant. Are you hearing what I'm saying? De renounce it and then make up your mind that till Jesus comes according to the supply of the spirit of grace it will be you and your spouse alone did you hear what I said the big deal about sex is that every time you have it it's covenant now the funny thing is that some of the covenant lasts for two minutes some can last for five minutes if you're a drug addict it can last for I don't know why you're laughing. You're not answering me. You should be answering me. You're laughing. You know I'm setting you up because I want to find who we answer. <laughs> yes, you can me say two weeks. That's death. <laughs> That's death. <laughs> two weeks, bro. <bravo. laughs> That's not covenant covenant. The two of you have become. <laughs> you have become the spirits of the covenant. <laughs> officiated over the table. <laughs> but let me tell you the truth. Okay, I was saying something about Reverend Sam. Reverend Sam said whenever he's tempted, he said his own is a scripture. The scripture reads in the book of Proverbs, he that commits adultery is not wise. So he remembers when he has sexual desires towards another woman that you are just about to become a fool. That works for him. Find your own. And please, can I, I will not end but saying after, I, sorry, I will not end before saying this. Listen. Have boundaries for yourself. Married or single, have boundaries. Boundaries make you free. I've told you about the movie that Martin Lawrence acted. How many of you know Martin Lawrence? They were chasing him from America. You know, America and Mexico is one border. They were racing as soon as they got to Mexico. Not a wall, he just crossed and the place read, this is Mexico. He began to dance for the curves. He, he can get me. Are you gonna say? They couldn't cross. Boundaries give you safety. Have boundaries. All right? Let me say some strong things this morning. On no account, if you're a married person, I've said it before, should another man tell you you look sexy, you should go and cry. And you know, we ladies these days like those things. Even married women, they're beginning to like it. That you feel is a compliment. You wore the high heel, you wore a pencil skirt, you were decently dressed, and your colleague said, mm -mm, Madam, Madam B, you look sexy this morning. That is an insult on your husband. The only person that should tell you you look sexy is your husband, the husband of your covenant. As a single lady, there are places a man has no business holding you. I'm looking for trouble now, right? Just keep quiet, like I'm, but I know what the Lord is doing here. You see, these parts, praise God, they are private. Now, every covenant has got signs and every covenant has got elements. Ladies, your backside and your breast is an element of the covenant for your husband like the communion. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It has no business being outside. We don't need it. We're not in covenant with you. 
it is the person that has the covenant that has right to see it there are elements of the covenant this may not be an element of your covenant i can see this one and touch this one and lay hands on you i told you of the man who was very very anointed he has a history of destroying cancer my pastor preaches about him a lot as he was laying hands a woman had cancer of the breast and he grabbed it in the name of jesus my pastor said watch that guy he's not going to last in ministry too long they're going to bring a case over him he's not going to last okay you don't have to touch the breast to minister to breast cancer you don't have to you are a pastor that is under attack there are places you don't touch am i helping anybody and please, you can't stay with somebody you are not married to and say, we know ourselves, we've said, we've said that we're not going to touch each other. Uh-uh. Satan has already started touching the two of you. You don't understand what you're saying. He has touched. The problem is that you don't know you have been touched. <laughs> Set boundaries. I don't counsel women behind closed doors. It is a known thing in this church. One day I was counseling one lady that you understand we were trying to praise God. You know there are some ladies that are still trying to enter the gates. Are you getting what I'm saying? You understand what I mean? This chick was, they just came like this and, and shut the door. I said, look at this man. Everybody in this church knows that. So, you know why I say it publicly? So that if you come around that space, you know what to do. The door must be open. This man just came. Not that he's so he, and jammed the door. I said, the devil is here. <laughs> I said, this is the devil. And as I was counseling with the lady, her names were like, sir, 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 sir. I said, excuse me. I just went inside. I went to meet him. Why did you close the door? <laughs> oh, yeah? Wedge it back. Bam. Because every sexual sin needs privacy to flourish. Whether it's extramarital or before marital, anyone. Privacy. You have not seen, except in some crazy nations, you have not seen people have sex on BRT buses. <laughs> Except the person is crazy. In fact, what you would think is, ah, this person, you, you, you've seen mad people have sex on the street now. Don't they? Oh, yes, they do. One just even gave birth to twin babies last week. Yeah. When you are not mad. So it takes privacy. So what you need to do is shut down the privacy. I was listening to a man of God, a dear mentor for mine. I have a relationship with him anyways. Pastors in, um, around the e he said any, I'll call his name, Pastor Shego Badger. You know, I was listening to him. He said that he has a peer. Any lady that dresses provocatively and that is waiting to see him, he will just turn immediately. I said, that girl, he will just look at his peer. The girl is there. That girl must not come one, close, one inch close to me. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. So he will continue what he's doing. He said, do you know why I do that? He said, because of the way a man is configured, don't even get to that point before binding the devil. What he's telling you is that even with the anointing in me, I have flesh. So there's no need for her to come close so that the enemy begins to show me things. Yeah. Let me, let's be sincere with you. It's that day you discover that my wife is sincere. She knows what I'm saying. A dear, well, an acquaintance of mine that I love so much. That was the mistake he made. He couldn't hold it. He told the girl, ha, see your backside. Pastor. He has seen too much. Am I lying? He said, I've seen the... Hmm. This is so big. Next thing he said is, your boyfriend is enjoying. So the moment he began to see those things, he should have done something. Shut down the communication. In fact, there are some ladies you should not see. I told you one of my friends, he came to preach here some years ago. He said there was a lady that came to church. He stopped, the church was still young. He didn't follow her up. I said, what? He said, no, she's my spec. Everybody has a spec. He said, if it's this one that will make the church grow, she should not grow. Let her go to somewhere else. Are you understanding? He didn't follow her up. He didn't call because by her appearance alone, if I call his name, you know, he preached for us in the December conference. He said, he didn't, he told them, follow her up. He said, no, you want pastor? I'm not following you up. He said, pastor, she's my spec. If care is not taken, she can be more of a spec than your wife. Danger. Danger. That song? No, not that song. No. Okay, that's what that. It was late, after I spoke to you guys, I discovered what the song. I started seeing it. <laughs> <So shall we? laughs> 
No. There must be boundaries, sir. I teach you by example. Follow. As a married woman, your boss is doing this. You're in trouble. In fact, even if you're not married, why should you be doing this? For what? I'm asking, for what? what, is the, what what's the problem with the hair? There must be a reason now. If somebody falls and you pick the person up, you are picking the person up. What is this for? You are looking for trouble. Am I helping anybody? Yes, sir. Can I talk about pornography? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, I like this. I, I like this. <laughs> it is something we don't like talking about, but it's very real. Ah, if you check some people's phones here, you'll be alarmed. Go to the history, you will see it. Funny, funny sites that they can't even mention with their mouth. Abaka.com. I'm just imagining. Are you going to say? Allow me this laughing. What you don't know is that it's lashing to your soul. Shall I tell you? You will never enjoy sex with your wife if you are not married. Once you are held by pornography, she will never be enough. She will never be enough. When you hear somebody say it's not good in bed, how do you know the one that's good? Think about it. That pastor, he's not good. He's not. You know. How do you know? You have come from somewhere. Even if you're not come from somewhere, you have seen things. And what you don't know, those guys use aphrodisiacs. Am I lying? You know what they call aphrodisiac? Huh? Thank you very much for helping me. These people want to embarrass me. You don't know aphrodisiac? Oh, if you are pretending not to know, so I will ask you how you know. Oh, I get it, I get it, I get it. <laughs> no, no, no. Please feel free and speak the truth. Amen? They use aphrodisiac. How can somebody, you self think, you're a man, how can someone be having sex for hours? Is he his calling? Even with the calling, you will retreat. After I finish preaching, now I will rest. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And you say it the way, oh God. You will first kill your wife, and one of the first things it does, it makes your wife an object. Now, can I come to the women? When people think pornography, they just think men. No. I have ministered to many ladies. Many. That is the area I minister to people the most when it comes to relationship. Bound. I told you of the one that when she opens the site, she begins to shake. Her veins, she begins to shake. We had to put a password on her system for sites like that. I told you that was when I learned that that was possible. In fact, her own was white people having sex. You see, this, this thing is, is a demon. She said, when it's black people, she's not, but once she sees white, I was shocked. She said, once it's white skin, boom, she's activated. And you wonder why that one is having a liking and she's saying, I want to marry a white man. Just Lord, I'm asking, let a white man ask me out. And God will make sure that it's a black man that comes. Pornography is a killer. And guess what? You never have enough of it. Have you observed? Answer the truth. Say the truth. Have you observed? Just like you never have enough of sex. You know God put it there in the marriage covenant so that you can keep rewinding. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And refreshing the page. So what are the boundaries we can put for Pornography. Who can give me examples? Let me hear from people now. Bless us. What are the boundaries we should put? Huh? Some people say apps, R rated movies. So let me start from where I should start from. I'll close with this. Auntie, uncle, there are some music videos you should not be seeing. You know, the music videos we have today, they are not musical. We know music. You know, I thank God that I have a grace there. I know music. So I know that these things are not music. These are soft pornographic pictures. There's nothing... Even we want to talk about secular songs like G, Kenny Rogers of those days. When they sing songs, you get message. But this one, the first thing you see is pictures. Bo, 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 plus noise. And things are shaking up and down. And by the time you are done, you are aroused. 
You don't have to watch porn first to go in that line. Number two, what kind of movies do you see? Oh, that one is... I told my wife, there's no movie you can watch with your child in this generation. Not one. I don't get to see movie, movies often. But when, like, for instance, if I want to rest, and I want to just... I just like everybody to be in the sitting room. There are some, if you try it... So I've taught my kids, because you have to teach them, they can go to an auntie's house. If my, any of my children, at least the ones I know that are of, of age, once you start kissing, they go for the remote. Or they shut it down. Now, pastor, why do you have to teach them that when you don't want that in your house? They can go somewhere else. Some of you, the movies you watch. I told you many years ago, how I came across Spectacles. But some of you will continue watching Spectacles. I mistakenly came across, I went to the city of Ifeb because I like Asian, my wife knows the kind of movies I like. I like Crusaders, all those ancient kind of movies. That's what, that's movies I like. I don't like all this, your modern, modern, modern day craziness and all of that. Okay? Hercules and things like that. that that's, that's, that's what tickles my fancy. So I saw it in the city of Ife. Spectacles, blood and sand, something like that. Ah, I said, this is my type. I went home. It was a laptop. I just put the city like this. If you've watched the movie, say the truth, let the devil be ashamed. If you watched the movie from the beginning, they began to manifest. I said, maybe this one is a mistake. I allowed it. Eh? You watch this one, you will fornicate with, with power. Just tell yourself the truth. If you continue, if you do season one, you don't fornicate, you might be a homosexual. Then some people do season two, season three, season four. When they finish, they get angry. Write the producer, send them an email. When is the next season coming out? You can see that you're out of season, sorry. You are telling them when is the next one coming out? You have been held. And can I offend you again? You know, some people say it's not bad. I've said it. If you sit down like this and you watch BB Africa, two things are involved. You either don't have the Holy Spirit or you don't fellowship with him. Because by the time you watch BB Africa and you see somebody doing some things and they are not married, the Holy Ghost, who is, do I have a witness here? The Holy Spirit will convict. So if you can, if you, some of you will know who is going to be evicted and who is going to come in, you are already being evicted from, from sanity and life. You can't be watching all those things and you say you are, how won't you go to work and masturbate? How? You will. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ, anybody here under the hold of pornography, under the hold of masturbation, today is your day of deliverance. Yes. Male or female, you are free. Yes. Every single person who has, you are already addicted to sex, and you think that marriage is what will solve it. No, no, no. A thousand times no. I'm here to surprise you. Fix yourself. Before you get married. Marriage doesn't fix it. Marriage is an amplifier. Whatever you come in with, it will amplify it. And I pray over you in the name of Jesus, the grace and the discipline you need. Over your sexual life as a single person. May God give it to you today. The grace to stick to boundaries. May God give it to you today. If there's any wrong association in your life, a friend that keeps triggering this desire for illicit sex, I ask that by the power of God, he will shut that relationship down. In the precious name of Jesus. Please stand to your feet as we close. Somebody begin to talk to God. If you need help in any aspect of your life, sexual life, whether you're married or single, just talk to the Lord. There's nobody that is hearing you. This is an atmosphere that is anointed. Hallelujah. I need you to sort yourself out with the master. Whether you're married. In fact, if you are married, you need this more. If there's any way the enemy has brought in a strange practice, a strange desire for someone else that is other than your spouse. Today that hold is broken. In the name of Jesus, lift your voice and begin to talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. It may not be you. It may be your spouse. You started observing some strange and funny activities during sex with him or with, with her. You start observing some things. You know that something is happening from without. In the name of Jesus Christ, free yourself and your spouse. In the precious name of Jesus, is anybody talking to God? Is anybody talking to God? There's freedom in this house. There's freedom in this house. Freedom from sexual addiction. Freedom from pornography. Freedom. Freedom. Some of you will receive the capacity to look your boss in the eye and tell him no more sex with you. I'm not married to you. Today, you receive that grace. You will no longer activate negative covenants. 
in the name of jesus and god's people said amen. amen father in the name of jesus i stand on this platform and the office you've called me every covenant that has been activated back on campus present time yesteryears true illicit and wrong sex in the name of jesus i shut down the operation any covenant in sex or from sex that has crept into the lives of your people and is beginning to affect the present lord by the blood of your cross i ask that the blood of Jesus' covenant we swallow those negative covenants in the precious name of jesus from today i declare you free from today i declare you absolutely liberated from the shackles of sex wrong covenant in sex in the name of god the father in the name of god the son in the name of god the holy spirit in jesus name we've prayed amen give god a hand clap of praise and please you may be seated in the presence of god So, um, our announcer will do more justice to this. Do you have a flyer, please? If you have your flyer, I'd like for you to pick it up and look at the details. If you have questions, please, I want you to put in that, especially for these relationship meetings and all of that. Put my email. I think they should send you to my email, not the church email. AntonioNoah.gmail.com. If you have questions after this service, because um, I've, I've had to deal with somebody saying that the husband is beginning to ask for anal sex. And now sex. It's a strange thing that just happened. It's never happened before. I'm also going to give you a soft answer, but it's, it's, it's a thing that will have to walk the person through. It may be that the seed of homosexuality is being activated. For a man to ask his wife all of a sudden for anal sex, it is even an abuse by nature. Something is going wrong, but you as the spouse can shut it down. So if you, if you need, uh, people ask, do they need, okay, I think you put it up, antonionoha.gmail.com. Any questions as regards your life, your faith, especially relationship matters, please send it to me. Because there are some things we can't handle on the pulpit. It's something we have to sit down and walk you through. All right. Um, so that's that. And um, if you are here too, and for years, you've not had sexual communion with your spouse. Um, I mean, how do I put this? Maybe because of a fight or something. I want to strongly suggest that you go and shut that door because the devil is going to amplify it. All right? If you need counseling, see me. Can we put it up? I can see some people stretching for it. So please put it up. AntonioNoha.gmail.com. Any questions? I'll get it directly. Nobody will see it. And then I'll get back to you. So um, on the 26th, a few Sundays from now, we'll be having an, uh, our singles married and satisfied outreach. Um, yes, you should clap. You know, I started like this before, but God has given me, in fact, it was when during the conference, I was there and on that spot and I had go back to teaching marriage and relationship and help people because I tell you the truth, 95% of my counseling is marriage related, sexual issues. So there's a generation that needs to be free and we want to be instruments in the hands of God. The time is 4 p.m. in this venue come the beautiful thing about that conference is that i'm just teaching but in that conference i will sit down and take questions from a platform what do you call that platform nobody will get to know that you're the one sending it's an anonymous platform you send it you can even send your questions sitting down we'll read the questions on the screen there you see it nobody will be able to trace it back to you and then i'll be answering hard questions on this platform all right so make it a day to destiny whether you're single or married if you want to ask a question about your husband nobody will know you are the one so we have that uh, platform for you it's a very serious event we're not coming here to have fun even though we'll have fun amen but we're coming here to free men and free destiny single married and satisfied it is very possible that you can be satisfied with your marriage you hear what i said it, but if you want to do it instagram way you won't be satisfied am i correct instagram marriages social media marriages you can't be satisfied but if you want to do it the word of God, the way of the word, you will and you can be satisfied. I'm not saying it's going to be perfect, but you'll be satisfied. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Have you eaten a meal before that wasn't perfect, but you were satisfied? Uh -huh. So that's, that's what can happen in marriage. The time is 4 p.m. Please, no African time. Because I need people to go back home and prepare for Monday's work. This is Lagos. All right? 4 p.m. We begin. Quick praise and worship. I bring God's word. But the main thing I'll teach for about an hour there about the main thing is the question the Q&A sessions and if you can man of God I think you will have to send the link before time 
let people start sending the questions in all right send the question so that we'll know how many hours or one how long we carve out for the question and answer sessions amen if you've given up on marriage and you feel you are very old come for that conference are you hearing what i'm saying if you've given up the power of god will hit you in a special way there'll be joinings joinings i'm not saying you meet somebody here what i'm saying is that the grace and you may meet somebody here too amen amen and amen hallelujah praise god all right so that's it um, our announcer will take it up from there god bless you have a beautiful week and jesus is lord um, oh oh please i'm not done bring the children they resume school tomorrow as fast as you can ma and today is jesu tommy's birthday what a beautiful day amen and a day where we are praying for the kids at last. So please, permit us. We normally close at about this time, 11.30. It's, it's 11.20, right? Yeah, so we just pray for the kids and then we'll, we'll be out of here by 11.30. So let's um, pray for the children and anyone trusting God for the fruit of the womb. It's your time. I said it's your time. God is doing it already. Nobody is permitted to be barren in this house. Not one. Because of the God that we serve. Amen. So please hold up. Let's wait for the children. Um, I hope Jesus told me he's not asleep. Because that man is four in one. I was telling the mom, when I say she dodges it because she knows maybe I may be speaking under the anointing, but I told God, I'm just joking now. I said, imagine you had four of Jesus told me at once. How many of you have seen Jesus told me? Oh, you don't know him. You know him. Maybe you don't know his face. When he begins, you just imagine she was four. This guy was four. I told her you would have been half of your size. If you should come quick. Please, I'm just using this to waste them. Can somebody help, help them with the kids, please? Let them come as fast as they can. We want to pray for them. I think they're going back. All schools are opening tomorrow. Is it all schools? Some. Um, but let's pray for them so they will take it. And, um, and um, Pascal and likes children too much. I've told her that, um, <laughs> amen. Wow. Please celebrate these champions now. You can't just watch them come like this. Uh, is this how you file them, teacher? Okay. <laughs> amen. Wow. Amen. That's beautiful. Okay. Beautiful. You know, the Bible says, uh, please the door. Your quivers will be full of them. But he wasn't giving you the commandment alone. He gave all of us. So don't, don't overfill your quiver. Praise God. But if all of us come with our quivers, the quiver is for you. Understand that? It's a mandate for the, for the, for the human race. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Father, we pray for these children. During the coronavirus, there was concern about kids. But somehow you kept our children. They went back to school for the first term or the second term and you kept them. Lord, I pray, I bring these children before you. Keep them. Amen. Sustain them. Amen. So as I lay hands on them, Lord, I declare over them that their path and that of the destroyer will not cross. Yeah. All of you, your path and that of the destroyer will not cross. Yeah. Your path and that of helpers will cross. Yeah. Your life is hid in Christ. Christ is hid in God. Bring them forward. Christ is hid in God in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare that none of you will fall to the ground. You keep growing, not just physically, mentally, spiritually, and emotionally. You do well in your academics. You will be more excellent than your peers because of the Spirit of God in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Please, let's stand up as we celebrate Jesus to me. The kids should still stay here. Okay, I saw cake, but the cake is not for us now, it's for the uh, church, eh? Okay, so please, if you want cake, you can go and buy your own cake. The cake is for the kid. Because I know some of you like cakes. You have been waiting for cake. <laughs> you know, Jesus Kwanumi has learned very well. You see, you don't kill yourself. Amen, you just do the right thing. Anybody that wants to eat cake should go. This guy, he doesn't like, he doesn't like me carrying him yet. Amen. But, you see... God is faithful. I'm carrying Jesse to me as a point of contact. Online and on ground. Not only are we going to have safe conceptions, it will be safe deliveries. 
I remember that night and I remember how God made this baby come cheaply. You know, initially they told me he came in stillbirth, right? It was a stillborn. Am I correct? And before that birth experience, there was a morning devotion we had that you said something that was uh, talked about the spirit of death and things like that. God knows how to go before you. Mr. Siobhi, one more time, you'll come. Uh, God told me, I was supposed to call you, I'll lay hands on you till labor. Every Sunday. So if I forget, you come for it. In fact, including Wednesday. Amen? So we'll come and sit here. Now just sit and wait for me. Amen? You see, delivery is not a joke. It is not a joke. When a woman goes, that's why I, I don't understand how you are beating your wife. If some men go into the labor world, they will die. We don't have the capacity for that pain. Amen? So you should treat the women in your life correctly. Father, we thank you for Jesu to me. Today is his birthday. We were alive and we are alive to see him become one. So Lord, I declare many more years. Yes. Not years in sickness, but in health. Yes. Sound mind. Yes. He will be first amongst his pairs. Yes. He will be far above his equals. Yes. His lines and that of destroyers and destructions will not cross. Yes. He will give his parents peace all the days of their lives. He will be mighty on the earth. Not just spiritually, but physically, academically. He will be relevant in his time. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you because we will celebrate 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50, 60, 100, 120 if Jesus dies. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's say a very happy birthday to Jesus who told me. If you listen to midweek services and you hear people shout, he's the one. You know, we're trying to look for a way about it. When I teach, he shouts. He teaches from the back, I teach from the front. Amen. I don't know if we should say he's calling, but let's wait and see. Amen. So, um, let's, uh, who's, who's going to have him? No, I want to pray for you. You. Ah, no, come. Who will carry him? Thank you. Thank you. When is he going to be one? Your son. January. Wow. Father, we thank you for Mrs. Osiobe. You see, it's going to be smooth for you. Easy. No stress. Ah, uh ah, -uh, no complications. In the precious name of Jesus, you'll be kept by the power of God. I speak to the doctors on duty that day. They come under the influence of the Holy Spirit. I speak to the nurses. They come under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Everything on that day will be accurate in the precious name of Jesus Christ. As I lay hands on you now in faith, I declare all you need for this delivery, mental, spiritual, body, every aspect of your life may be imparted unto you now in the name of Jesus Christ. We'll come back here to testify of the goodness of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Please put your hands together and celebrate God. Hmm? Huh? Advert. Anniversary. Who? Oh, they didn't tell me. I didn't know. Why did you put it up? You forgot. All right. So we have a database where we pick up our anniversaries. Today is the anniversary. Come on. Let's bring your service out. Ah, uh ah. -uh. You can. I would have forgiven you if you if you didn't tell me. Ah. In these days, where people are breaking up their marriages, they should come. Come. It's not. A, come now. Come. Amen. Amen. So it's double dose for you. Yes, Beautiful. What's the number now? Six. My God. Six. Father, in Jesus' name, lift your hands and begin to bless them. Bless them. I said open your mouth and bless them. That there will be new wine, new levels. When you see a union that has survived and has been kept by the power of God, you declare into their lives and you'll be a recipient of that which you pray for some of you are trusting god for marriages bless them online or on ground bless them speak words over them health you see you will none of you none of you the both of you none of you will raise the child alone it will be the both of you you begin together you do it together ripe good old age in the name of jesus father i thank you for your service and i pray in the name of jesus christ that there will be new wine Lord, you give them the harvest of six years in one. In every aspect of their lives. In the name of Jesus. Thank you because the tears have been turned to joy. 
and it will be joy and rejoicing and rejoicing and rejoicing till your return on the earth in Jesus name thank you because this marriage will not be put asunder thank you because the wisdom they need is given to them the love they need is given to them I activate fresh wine in Jesus name amen say happy anniversary to your series thank you amen wow long long six years you know just like that praise god that's how some of you now will soon be marking third year amen you know how many years are you now huh is it like you're three years just now so you're three years old in marriage and you look sweet 16 praise god i hope you're wearing your ring huh very important. Do you wear a ring? All right, that's good. So that's a law. Any married person you see without a ring, come and report them to me. I'll, I'll deal with them. And then if you are not married, you have no business wearing a ring. God bless you. Jesus is Lord. Amen. So let's come and close the service. So one more time, please help me celebrate our mothers. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate you. God bless you. Please sit down, take the announcements, and we'll close. I right, praise God. Hallelujah. Let's package our offerings and our tithes for God. Hallelujah. Um, morning devotion starts as well tomorrow. Mondays to Fridays, 6 a.m. to 6.20. Join Pastor online uh, via Mixlr for morning devotion. Also, definitely, Wednesday service continues and Pastor will also be sharing on the covenant as well, which we have actually begun today. Amen. Um, for those who want to give offerings online, the details are also on the screen. If you want to give physically, please signify this to your shares. They'll give you an envelope. And we will be good. All right. It's been our feet as we give God all the glory. It's been our feet as we give our offering. I'll give us like a minute to two to do that for those who want to do transfers online well, let's bless our offerings first of all father we thank you for this day which you have made and i will rejoice and be glad in it you see we should enter your gates with thanksgiving and your courts with praise we have come with our seats to say thank you for everything you have done through to us for everything you have given to us via the week and this new month we want to say give you all the glory and the praise we have come back to you with our sheaves thanking you for how far you have kept us thus far Father, as we step into the new week, Lord, we know that your bountiful blessings and harvest are available to us, and we'll come back again with our sheaves to us, giving you glory and praise. Blessed be your name, Father. Accept this seat with our gratitude as well. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. So assist with joy. Amen. All right. Praise God. All right. So for those who are doing um, transfers, please indicate on the transfer sheet exactly what's you are giving is an offering tight partnership sees whatever it is please signify to the transfers hallelujah also the the, the flyers have also been shared as well like pastor has said please let's make it a date with the conference coming forth on the 26th of september amen yeah. amen all right we have newcomers in the house come on hallelujah jam your hands together for god amen all right, so please, with a standing ovation, let's welcome every first timer in this house for the first time. Please, let's welcome them. Welcome them, welcome them, welcome them. You're a first timer, please just be on your feet. We we'll welcome you. Please just say love, welcome her, welcome her, welcome them. Mamas, um, our first timers in the house. I know we have a lot of first timers in the house, so please just walk to them. You definitely know they're first timers, amen. So we walk to them and say, welcome them. God bless you. Thank you, Ma. God bless you. Thank you, Ma. God bless you. Thank you, Ma. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. God bless you. God bless you. This is the word house. This is the word house where lives are being transformed by the word of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you for coming. Please have your seat. Um, our pastor is happy to have you here. Thank you for coming. And we would not want you to be in a rush anyway. Please just someone will be with you shortly. And I know that your life has been transformed by the word of God. And please, if you don't have any house of yours, you can make the word house your own house. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's benefit as we give our closing charge. And look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the word works 
and he upholds all things by the word of his power and because he upholds all things he will uphold you god bless you see you on wednesday and also tomorrow morning devotion amen